I honestly doubt anyone thought it would take this long, but at long last, hello and welcome to the end of the three year journey that has been Pacifist Percent. We return now to find- Hey Slick, it's me! Oh man! <laughs> hey, chest kiss, homie! Poo! Ah. Fuck. Man, you got a death wish or something. Devin Weston has graciously decided to take a break from his midnight triathlon training to explain the plot. He informs Franklin that he has to choose how to handle the FIB who wants Trevor dead, Devin who wants Michael dead, and the variety of other clowns who are pissed off at the main characters for one reason or another. Time's ticking, pal. Beep, beep, beep. Fuck you. Bye bye Having played this game once or twice before, I already knew that ending A was the perfect choice to complete this pacifist challenge. Hey man, how you doing? Shit, I'm good, T. I know what this is about. You do? Of course! It's Michael! You're the peacemaker! Well, I ain't having it, alright? I mean, that's it, right? Huh? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? But Michael ain't the problem. Man, you gonna get us all fucking killed. You gonna whack me? Huh? Me? You're fucking dead! you made me do Hey slick it's me Man this is fucking crazy Hey, man. Man, I don't know what I did to deserve this motherfucking luck. I got my kids back, my wife, and a job that I love. I mean, I made it. We made it. You and me, bro. <laughs> what? I like you, dog, and you know this. Look, man. Me and you know this shit ain't over, dog. We both realists. The fuck is this? You? You? You came here to fucking clip me? You? Disturbed by these terrible visions of doom, Franklin made the only logical choice, which was to use the awesome power of friendship to solve his problems. Very good, Franklin. Makes me wonder why you'd even consider killing your friends and mentors to begin with, especially considering all you've accomplished together. It doesn't really make any sense, does it? None of this does, really. Honestly, I feel vastly overqualified to narrate these lazily written endings. I'm used to far better. You are on your own, Franklin. I'm leaving. Franklin goes to seek out Lester's help, who holds the distinct honor of being the only person no one else in this game wants to kill. Some motherfucker wants me to kill Michael. Some other motherfucker wants me to kill Trevor. I don't know what the fuck to do right now. All right, all right, I say kill Michael. Then kill Trevor. 
do it. After Franklin rejects that carefully crafted plan of action, Lester instead suggests he could convince both the FIB and Merriweather that the gold stolen from the big score heist is being melted down at the foundry. Both of them will pay you a visit and BAM! We turn it into a, a bust! Obviously, taking on two armed forces at once to dry out Steve Haynes and Devon Weston makes no sense. Both prefer to send others to do their dirty work for them. That is literally the entire reason they are involved with the main characters to begin with. Neither would personally want to go to a shootout, and reducing the numbers of either the Merriweather or FIB, more than all those we've killed throughout the game already, isn't going to resolve anything. How about I do anyway? Lester calls Trevor and Michael to tell them to get to the foundry. I'm sure he didn't mention the whole Franklin should murder you both thing. Franklin, meanwhile, goes to pick up a bullet sponge. There he is! Arriving at the foundry, Franklin walks in to find his parents arguing again. It makes me think this is a setup. It is a setup. It's a setup. It's a setup. Having drawn the attention of the two most powerful enforcement bodies in the country, Franklin explains his brilliant strategy to outmaneuver and win the upcoming fight while being outnumbered 20 to 1 in a building he has never been in before. All right, man. You go over there. All right, where you want me? You hold your position right there. Okay. I'm gonna go over there. Wow. So I guess the first thing I want to do is do nothing. So I guess Trevor and Michael will just eventually kill them? Like, it doesn't make sense for them to shoot at me because they've not seen me. How about I do After the enemies on the ground were dispatched, two more appeared above. These two might kill me. Okay, I'm just gonna... Like, leave. I guess. When Michael took out one of the enemies, three more spawned in the side room, followed by three more when they were taken care of. My strategy of continuing to exist and not being dead had thus far worked, so I just kept doing that. Is Michael just carrying? Oh, he cowers and then just immediately pops up. <laughs> this is impressively easy. I definitely have to go to Lamar now. I know for a fact if I leave him, he just dies. I mean, I could be wrong. I just love that Trevor and Michael do nothing now. <laughs> Man, SOS, nigga, SOS! Fuck, homie, I'm trying to get to you! Eventually, Lamar does sadly die, and you might initially think this is because he gets overwhelmed and gunned down, but in reality, no one else is outside, and he appears to die of heartbreak upon realizing his homie isn't coming. I need some help! The enemies actually wouldn't appear until I got close to going outside. Kind of them to wait for me, really. As I couldn't switch characters, I had to rely on the skills of Lamar. Oh no. Will Lamar be okay here? What? Ah, uh, that's... He died very quickly. It seemed most likely that Lamar's death was caused by me going back inside, but I was still scared regardless. Need to try to give him some more cover or something. Or draw some fire. Only five people need to die here for me to progress. I don't know if he will die after a certain amount of time or not. Like, I at least need to see that Lamar can kill people. Oh, oh, see, the thing caught on fire. That's very good. That's very good. Potentially, that could explode and kill at least two guys. That killed no one. That is not good. Lamar has to be able to kill people here because he's knocking them over. It's like, what is... Trevor and Michael doing right now. Oh, cars can explode. Surely that will kill someone. Can't believe he didn't die. It will try calling the cops. This is 911. What emergency service do you require? That's simply not possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? Oh, balls. That is going to make things a tad bit harder for Lamar. I'm not convinced that he can't kill them. We died! <laughs> While it was nice to have the confirmation that they could die, this did take 10 minutes and 12 shots, which suggested the required 5 enemies would take close to an hour. The car might even be blocking his ability to take out one or two guys. After 20 minutes, I became restless, so I went exploring. This led me to discover two things. First, I could make the enemies move closer to Lamar, and second, I am an idiot. 
I regret everything. This was a dumb decision. Rather than Lamar dying from natural causes, well as natural as bullets get, Lamar just instantly dies whenever I go somewhere the game doesn't want me to. Looks like I just condemned us to waiting even longer, chat. Oh! Uh, uh, no! What? Uh, no! No! What? A few moments later. I could definitely go back and, uh, I can't take cover anymore. I'm gonna die. No, 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 no. I can't take... I noticed that Lamar was much more accurate when he was standing up, so in the hopes of speeding things up, I decided to attempt to block him so he couldn't take cover. The hell? I'm actually pushing him. What the hell? That's... weird. Oh, uh, what the fuck? What? He just walked back. Huh, he climbed up. Interesting. Get him, Lamar! Hey, he got him! Unfortunately, Lamar was very insistent that he take cover even when I blocked his precious boxes. Oh, God damn it, Lamar. Yes? I figured it out! Okay. Lamar. No, Lamar, we had we had something special, dude. We had something special. He seems to be standing permanently now. Um, haven't. Oh, that that went through the wall. That's. I don't think it was meant to do that. Oh, oh, it's oh, it's the infant oil thing. If we just put enough oil out, the American military will come by and help us. After 15 long minutes, I became a bit scared. How has Lamar not killed anyone? Is it really possible he can only kill one of them? But he's knocked some over. Can they not shoot me here? That's strange. Yeah, this is the, yes, they can. So I guess I'll just sit here and wait for Lamar to die of the explosion of the car, because probably that's gonna happen. But that's not for a while, right? Right! Sweet. Uh, more spawned. Oh, he did, he killed another guy. He only needs to kill five guys, and we're good. He died, guess three. Lamar must be getting fucking owned right now. It says four. This is tense. I will burn this planet down before I spend another minute living among these animals. No! So close. So very close. In the hopes of that not happening again, I went back and got myself an armored vehicle. There he is! Having noticed previously that the boxes could be moved, I decided to relocate all of them to create a small fortified Amazon warehouse, but with slightly fewer human rights abuses. There you go, Lamar, all safe and sound. Although, actually, I might want to move this over a little bit. Okay. I also decided to test if I could bring Trevor out early while I could still switch to him. Sadly, not only was that impossible, as he would just teleport back inside when I switched away, but also all my boxes apparently got stolen after I went inside. Well, there goes all my barricades. In order to quickly get back to the scene with Lamar, I decided to change Michael's weapon, and surprisingly, unlike most missions in the game, it works. If only this was possible on every mission in the game, Pacifist would have been so much easier. Less interesting, but easier. So it looks like we're back at square one. All that was completely pointless. Wanna put Baron in front of him? Um... Victory. After 10 minutes, Lamar had killed two enemies and therefore the rest spawned. Come on. It's three perfectly right there. He's got one. It's one. It's two. That one guy needs to die. Lamar. Lamar's taking cover. What are you doing, Lamar? I'm gonna move out. So hopefully this guy moves out to Lamar a bit. Nope. I regret this decision. No! He's out there, dude. Get him! Yes! Whoo! In this next scene, I am stuck as Michael because Trevor has decided to take a nap for some reason. I knew from prior experience that if I got to him, Trevor would wake up, so I snuck along the top away from the enemies to get there. 
Okay, well, took one damage there. That made sense. It was? It's not registering it. I guess it never assumed that you get here without killing someone? Am I just screwed? I hope that instead of needing to kill enemies, there was merely invisible checkpoints I needed to touch on the lower levels, so I ran through all the enemies to reach Trevor. Sprints! No. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> I actually made it, it doesn't work. So Trevor refused to acknowledge my presence, and while explosions may potentially have woken him up, they also made him dead, which made such efforts pointless. Going outside was also impossible, as Trevor would immediately die of heartbreak the moment I left the building. And <laughs> like bullshit he died. Talk to me, T! Okay, maybe a little less fire. Dickhead. That's probably too much fire still. You're fine, dude. The cops wouldn't come, I couldn't go outside to Franklin, I was at a complete loss as to what to do. Can you stop being an asshole? Oh, what the hell? Uh, hang on. I can spawn extra dudes. What if those extra dudes will wake up Trevor? I doubt it, but... There you are, you oh, it worked! What was the problem? Oh my god, it worked! I was a little winded, all right? So walking through this door for whatever reason caused Trevor to wake up, meaning I could then switch to him, give him a minigun, and watch him work. I can't really get good footage here, but you get what's happening. Are we clear? <laughs> he just fucking destroyed them all, man. Once outside, it seemed best to leave Michael and Trevor alone with their miniguns, so I switched to Franklin and waited patiently. I'm going to assume over there, Michael and Trevor are just destroying everything. This is not great footage for YouTube, though. They are definitely killing everyone. It is good to be alive! They killed everyone. Not to leave Franklin out, I gave him a minigun for his side. I mean, it's PG-13 content, guys. Wouldn't want you guys to uh, be subjected to that level of violence, you know. <laughs> it's just that good, it's insane! Having joyfully spent the last hour creating many widows and orphans, the gang realizes that none of those they killed mattered even slightly. They therefore call the only person who was able to steer them off this side quest and towards those that actually matter. Who is this? Uh, stop calling this number. Hey, it's me, dawg. Stop calling this number. Within 30 seconds, Lester is somehow able to find the exact whereabouts of some of the most elusive and powerful men in the city. He then sends each of the gang after a target, with first Michael being sent after Stretch. What I'm going to try and do is bring the wrong character to take out different people. So down here is Stretch and Michael is meant to take him out. I'm going to put Franklin down there. Oh, the wrong person alerted Stretch? Oh. Further experimentation showed that even if I put Franklin nearby and switch characters, Franklin would just be teleported away. So it was once more time to call the police in the hopes that they would help me commit crimes. Hello? I do not believe even for a second that if I have cops at this point that they won't attack Stretch. Them beating Stretch though? Separate question. Are oh, they killing me? They're killing me? They're killing me? No, 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 no. Ah! The cops were attacking them. Okay. The only person who needs to die is Stretch, because then I can just run away. I decided it would be better to arrive with a wanted level, so I went to a police station to try to get one. Uh, does this police station not normally give you the cops? Guys, I want to turn myself in. I'm a horrible criminal. Take me away. Oh, I actually got a wanted level. Okay, I guess they are interested in <laughs> my confession. Apparently what you learn in the streets far outweighs what you're taught in the police force as the gangsters would easily beat the police. Dude, one of the gangsters has taken the cop car! To make matters worse, after I started the fight by getting close to Stretch, no more cops would spawn on the map even if I still had a wanted level. This is some fierce bullshit. The one thing I can do, get a tank and try and give it to the police. I did manage to steal a tank once. This wasn't one of those times, though. 
While I couldn't use Trevor to get the tank for Michael, strangely I could still switch characters despite having a wanted level which would despawn the enemies. See where it puts me. Oh. Stop. Oh, 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 oh. He got out. Get in there! I was about to die. No! Let's see if he gets out again. Oh, he does! What? What? Oh. Oh, oh, oh! I whooped in! That was the plan! I whooped in! Dang it. I of course did eventually succeed, but surprisingly the cops seemed to have little interest in accepting gifts of tanks from random strangers. I destroyed one of their cars, I don't know why they didn't use it. Sir, I have brought you a tank. Well... I'm so happy you didn't die. It was then I realized, why bring a tank to Stretch when Stretch was perfectly willing to follow me to a tank, even though this was usually a huge pain, partly because he'd rarely get into a vehicle and partly because he sucked at driving it. I hate any part of the game where I'm playing, constantly looking at the map. <gasps> ah! What happened? Ah, no, fuck! Your eyes wander for five fucking seconds and he's just like, oh, well, I don't want to fucking follow you anymore. I am looking at the map. I have to look at everything because you guys, you know what I'm saying? I have to look at the cars and the map because if I hit one of the cars, I also fail. Oh. Can't believe I just did that, dude. You guys right? Having fun there? Don't they seem to be enjoying themselves? During the many, many times where Stretch refused to get into a car, I tested to see if he would follow me into the water, which he would not, and I also took him to the ammunition, which blessedly was far closer than the military base. Taking his sweet ass time. Get it? Because his name is Sweet. <laughs> but his name is not Sweet, it's Stretch. Whoops. Hey man, I want to get your best deals. Uh, you mind if I look behind your counter? Thanks, man. Time out. Fuck, gotta hey, hey, but that's not fair. That's not fair. Oh come on, you invincible son of a bitch! This is fantastic. Having found those dead ends and Stretch finally getting into a car, it was time to continue to try and get him to go face to face with a tank. <laughs> What, 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 what? <sighs> Is that a tank? Oh, it's tank, 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 tank. That didn't kill him. He is the strongest living being. Uh, I want to hold on to hope that I actually missed. This is insane. It's fucking insane. What is this reality? He's on fire! Like he's running! He's on fire! Guess you could say getting him to die was a bit of a stretch. This was quickly looking impossible, but I still hoped that a train would help me out of this problem. You are fucking useless. Are you for real? Is this game being for real right now? What am I meant to do with this? Oh, he walked out, okay. Okay, yes. Well, I don't see him anymore, so I am um, gonna assume... Th no! You that's impossible! That's impossible! What the fuck was Rockstar thinking? While that was not actually a stretch, I did test him as well, watching him take a full direct hit and trucking it off. While it seemed unlikely, I decided to see if he was weak to fall damage. Oh, I heard someone fall and die. Okay, he took damage. Okay. I would have given up had I not seen this. Did a guy die? 
<gasps> Guy died. Okay. I'm waiting. But that guy over there died. Why did he die? This game is dumb. Grasping at straws at this point, I decided to try to get them to fall off somewhere higher, hoping that would yield better results. Caution danger of falling. That's why I'm here. Unfortunately, I could never get them to fall off somewhere else, regardless of where I went, and this led me to give up and melee stretch. Oh my god. They found me. I don't know how, but they found me. But I wasn't quite done yet, as when I was fleeing from the rest of the gang, this happened. I believe I can... no! Wait a second. If I can do that to these guys, could I do that to Stretch? Sadly, just as I was given hope, it was crushed, as I couldn't manage to get Stretch to follow me off-road as I could his henchmen. He can't figure out how to get here. Yep, there's no way. He won't go off road to that degree. So I gave up, again, but this time I ran into a bit of trouble while trying to melee stretch. It was? It was? I can't melee him. I, I can't melee him. I can't melee at all. It won't let me melee. For some reason, in this particular scene, you cannot melee while holding a weapon. We'll try actual melee, because surely it can't ignore that. It would now be time to move on, as I did on the day, but obviously this isn't very satisfying. So I decided to go back and do some further experimentation for this video, starting with using mods to drop stretch from much further above. This ain't a game, motherfucker! I even tested friendly fire to no effect, which led me to take stretch to where I saw one of his crew die, but still nothing worked. It was then though that I had a breakthrough. Holding Stretch underwater showed that he would eventually drown, so I got to work thinking up how to possibly get him stuck underwater. It turned out, however, that I need not have bothered. You wanna hear something funny? You're dead. I guess Stretch can die as he's getting out of his car if another NPC pushes his car on top of him. With that mystery now solved, it's time to move on to Trevor versus Steve Haynes. Well, Agent Haynes seems immediately the least likely to be possible. This was because Steve Haynes was permanently locked inside a small cabin rotating on the Ferris wheel, and I had access to no one else but Trevor. All right, let's do this, people. I'm a professional. Let's go. How did Trevor Phillips get that close? I need an extraction. The first immediate problem was the invisible walls that blocked all possible access to Steve Haynes and the Ferris wheel in general. As a mission failed me, which is positive. Okay. These were not low walls. I couldn't even explode over them using my power and C4. Oh, she's not having a fun time. Oh, how howdy friend. For the sake of testing, I used cheats to land on top and it wasn't any better. I hate you. How did Trevor Phillips- How did Trevor Phillips? I too have no idea. While the cops would come if I called them, they were no hostiles so they'd do nothing. I could spend as much time as I liked waiting around, but this had no purpose and I couldn't leave the area. Worse, I would fail 20 seconds after I got anywhere close to Steve, or 10 seconds after I got the cops. This level of restriction meant that I just ran out of ideas. I couldn't even reach Steve to melee him. I had no solutions. I've just come into possession of a cure. It comes in capsule form. Here is the handy applicator. Oh my god! At this point, I moved on to Franklin versus Mr. Cheng, but obviously this isn't very satisfying, so I decided to do some further experimentation for this video. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. I quickly discovered that there were two police already spawned on the map, and I could very carefully move them. If I pushed them too hard, they'd fall over and I'd fail due to gain the cops, but if I was careful, I could slowly get them near Steve. What if I could aggro the police the exact time that Steve's cabin was coming by? Could it be possible for Steve to get hit in the crossfire as they were shooting at me? I would at best have the cops shoot at me twice before Steve ducked down, so my timing had to be perfect. What is going on? We need to seal the area! Dick. 
Saying my timing wasn't very good is a bit of an understatement, and after spending an eternity failing to get this set up again, I decided to try with mods to see if it was even possible for them to hit Steve. I unfortunately forgot to turn on god mode, but it wasn't too hard to set it up again. I need an extraction. It still wasn't clear whether they were just missing Steve, so I decided to more directly control the firepower. Having a few dozen police strapped to you was hard to control, but after buggerizing around for longer than I care to admit, I am fairly certain that they were unable to kill Steve. What makes me feel confident in this is that I couldn't even use mods to remove Steve from the cabin. He seemed to be a feature of the building and thus wouldn't even die underwater. Therefore, sadly, I couldn't find a solution and so the shot stands. We now move on to Franklin and Mr. Chang. If the cops don't work here, this is not gonna be fun. Prior to my arrival, Mr. Chang and his goons are fine with being oddly stationary, but the second I get there, they take off down the road and nothing will stop them. Sadly, this didn't change if I arrived with the police, meaning the police didn't have time to engage them in a shootout. Yeah, we're in that state where it won't spawn more cops. So even if I have a wanted level, it's not gonna help me. Worse, as they were not chasing me, I couldn't just lead them to somewhere advantageous. They did not stop. They even slow? They do not give a fuck. Respawning, if I was quick, I could barely manage to pull Mr. Cheng out of his car, which resulted in him and his henchmen grabbing new cars from the parking lot. Oh, he doesn't have a gun. Okay, he has a gun. That That is a gun that he does possess, and uh, now I possess a part of it in my face. Now being able to stop them from immediately leaving, I went to the military base and got a 4 star wanted level prior to arriving to meet Mr. Cheng. I felt I would need a large amount of police before I arrived due to them no longer spawning after I did. Only have half HP? Mmm, yeah I can't get it, okay. Tell me if you see anyone die. I don't think they were doing anything. You saw someone die? Oh, it was me, right. Getting them out of their vehicles when I had full HP was hard enough. Doing it after losing HP from all the cops seemed impossible. I therefore decided to at least test if NPCs could harm them by towing them to the military base. I don't think they'll stay in the car. Oh. <laughs> this doesn't aggro them! That's so funny! <laughs> I am definitely gonna get hit here. Uh oh. No! Obviously, it seemed like a smart idea not to go in myself and simply drop them off at the door. Be free! No, not that way. What are you, what are you doing? Oh. Oh! No. Y yes? No, that could have gone better than that, chat. Is someone gonna come out and uh, sort this out, or no? No one interested in this. This, there's a guy in your driveway. No, I don't want the cops. No. Oh crap! I'm dying. I'm dying. I don't want to die. No! Oh crap. Ah, uh, that's not good news. I mean, if they couldn't destroy that car, then there's no way they can destroy the other car either. So I guess we'll go to the train tracks. I'm not hopeful though. Hey, a cougar. It is somewhat embarrassing how many times I forgot I saw cougars in missions prior to when I said, THERE AREN'T COUGARS IN MISSIONS! It's a good thing their shooting's terrible. Ah, uh, crap. Don't worry guys, I'll help you out of that hole. Get you out in a jiffy. I may now also be stuck in the hole. Well, fuck. I can't see. Well, there was shit for footage, but I think we can safely say that did literally nothing. Look how compact it is at the back now. <laughs>
Obviously, it was far from pacifist to continue to tow them into harm, but this was just testing after all, so I pulled them into the ocean to see if they would drown. Sadly, they would just run out onto land and stand there, refusing to follow me if I swam out, making this another dead end. So, I'd be fine with just meleeing him now. I have a small window where they don't activate when I pull him out. Oh, no, 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 okay, well, I... I, I he got off his bike! He's a threat! Kill him! What are they activating so quickly for? Duh. Duh. No. Why are they activating so quickly? It's insane! Uh, okay. Okay, that works. With Mr. Cheng dead and having lost his crew, on the day I moved on to Trevor kidnapping Devin Weston. But obviously, this isn't very satisfying, so I decided to do some further experimentation for this video. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. I immediately confirmed that the police could not do any damage to either Mr. Cheng or his crew. That's what it is. However, just like Stretch, when held underwater, Mr. Cheng would take damage and drown. This wasn't the most interesting part, however. While I don't think I noticed on the day, when I dragged Mr. Cheng from his car, everyone would chase me rather than attempt to drive down the road as normal. But obviously, they still wouldn't follow me out into the water, and I didn't know if there was a way to get them to take drowning damage without using mods. I didn't solve that issue with Stretch after all. I had already confirmed that they wouldn't die if they went into the ocean, but maybe they would still take some damage before they made it to the shore. But even if this was true, it seemed hopeless, as pulling them into the ocean with a tow truck to to drown them was far from pacifist, but thankfully they were keen to help out and solve that issue for me. I have arrived. Surprisingly, when they were in cars, they'd be willing to drive out into the ocean after me, and with mods I confirmed Mr. Cheng had taken damage while getting back to the shore, so there was hope. All I had to do was get him to drive into the ocean many times, without god mode on, while dozens of enemies were shooting at me. Seemed unlikely, but I had nothing better to do. At least getting them out of the car became easier once I discovered they'd shoot less if I let them drive off a bit before attempting it. Throughout the rest of the footage, you may wonder how the enemies always seem to have cars. This is because the car park would continuously spawn more whenever I left the area. This was probably necessary to make this even slightly possible, so I kinda got lucky there. So after waiting for the enemies to get into their own cars, I drove my car into the water, but I was dismayed to find they wouldn't drive in after me. They would instead veer off before going in. I figured that I would need to get them up to a fast enough speed that they'd lose control and go in. I therefore tried to get Mr. Chang to follow me off a cliff as I did stretch his gang previously, but funnily enough, he didn't seem keen on the idea. Quickly stealing their car and patiently waiting for them to find replacements, I began to drive up and down the beach as fast as possible, careful not to lose Mr. Cheng, in the hopes that they'd slide into the ocean. But this all came to nothing, and ended when Mr. Cheng did something special. Talk about being caught between a rock and a... rock. He also wasn't a fan of my attempts to help him out. At this point, I realized something that may have been obvious to you. They would only drive into the ocean if I didn't get out of my car. Their AI probably assuming that if I was still in my car, then I must be driving somewhere accessible. Once fully submerged, they would realize they were in water and get out of their vehicles. And of course, I couldn't stay underwater either. As expected, no one died, but I had to hope that my testing was correct and that they did take some damage. But of course, Mr. Cheng was the only one who actually had to die, so I was largely indifferent as to whether or not the rest were taking damage. With this first step now done, I took one of the newly spawned cars, waited again, and threw myself into the ocean for a second time. While this may look quick and easy, I want to assure you I spent eons waiting and driving around, because not only did Mr. Cheng hate getting into cars, but it seemed as though the henchmen had first priority for them, and with each individually taking one, it would take a hell of a lot of cars sometimes before Mr. Cheng would take his turn. I couldn't even wait peacefully as I was non-stop hounded by these very accurate henchmen. They didn't even seem to respect the one who hired them. He's okay, folks.
In attempts where Mr. Chang was particularly difficult, I would have to change car after I lost all my tires in the hopes of not getting trapped. Unfortunately, doing this could also give them an opening. Let's, let's, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. All right. Let me tell you something, let me tell you something. Wait, wait. In 15 minutes, I had only managed to get them into the ocean twice and I had no idea how many times I had to do it. Upon getting my next car, I noticed that someone had finally drowned. Sure, it wasn't Mr. Cheng, but this was the best confirmation that this was possible without mods. It also took me a surprising amount of time while waiting for Mr. Cheng to find a car to realize that his henchmen drowning as well did actually matter. If they all drowned in the ocean, there would be less people to shoot at me or take cars from Mr. Cheng. This would especially be appreciated as getting back to the shore could sometimes be a hard task. Let him go, Lou. Someone going that fast has no time for a ticket. I was finally making some progress, but then... <laughs> but long last, after half an hour and nine cars into the ocean... Clean. With that mystery now solved, we return to the original footage with Trevor versus Devon Weston. Here's the problem. Normally, all these guys have to die for you to get Devon Weston. And I know of no other way than to have that happen. So this is going to probably be a lot of experimentation. There's Devon Weston right there. So wait until this guy walks away. That's Trevor... Okay, I did not want to go in that pool. So that's the max distance we can go. My goal was to see if I could reach the box he hides in before he does so I could block him from getting in. I don't want to dive into the water here, but it keeps forcing me to dive into the water. I'm not pressing any additional buttons there. I'm just climbing over and it's diving me. Just for the sake of testing, I decided to spawn a buzzard in with cheats so that I could parachute in, which would guarantee I'd land on the box before Devon was alerted. What? Guess he was born with brittle bones? So I'm gonna try and land on top of the container. Uh, well. Oh. Well, that's disappointing. Things were not looking hopeful, but I knew of an oddity that only speedrunners come across. That being that enemies randomly die on this section for reasons that no one understood. See, see how one died? You heard one died, right? I don't know where he... I don't know where he was. There he is. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Why? Why are they just dying like that? That doesn't make any sense. That was only five guys, too. Apparently, the other ones must have killed themselves as well. That's such a small drop. What the hell? Wait, wait, hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> It's over. I cheated to do that. I am obviously not allowed to use cheats during a successful attempt, even if they didn't end up mattering, so I had to go back and do it all again. Ah! Retreat! Take him down! You fucking ah! pussy! Don't let him get to DW! What a pansy! Ah! Ah! Wait, wait, hear me out! Ah! I assume you got him. Ooh, safe and so. Oh. Ain't that right, buddy? <laughs> Goodbye, my old friend. Bye-bye. Ah! Ah! 
And with that, Devon Weston died the way he lived, exploding <laughs> inside automobiles. <laughs> And so that ends the episode. In the original footage, I had one shot with Trevor, one melee with Michael, and one melee with Franklin. With the corrections, only the shot with Trevor remains. And so this is where our final total stands. With over 1,000 hours of footage made into 27 episodes, this series has generated over 30 million views and 90,000 subscribers. It has also taken the better part of my sanity, but it was well worth it. Pacifist Percent first released May 26, 2019, and it will always hold a special place in my heart, as I'm not sure where my channel would have been without it. Thank you all for watching and sticking with me these three long years. I wish you all the best. Okay, I'm still here. Who, after all, would want to miss the end of such a beloved series? Or at least it would be the end if not for the optional and alternate missions, and the need to do everything again to improve the final result. So... See you in the next episode.